Yes, we're skipping scene three and going on to uh, scene four. And that is the Heath before the hovel with Lear, Kent, and Fool. Here's here. the place, my lord. Good, my lord, enter the tyranny of the open nights too rough for nature to endure. Let me alone. Good, my lord, enter here. Will it break my heart? I'd rather break mine own. Good, my lord, enter. Uh, thou thinks of much of this contentious storm invades us to the skin, so tis, so tis to thee. But where the greatest, greater malady is fixed, the lesser is scarce felt. Thou shun a beast, a bear, thou shun a bear. But if thy flight lay toward the roaring sea, thou meet the bear in the mouth. When the mind's for free, the body's delicate. The tempest in my mind doth from my senses take all feeling else, save what beats there. Filial ingratitude. Is not, is not as this month mouth should tear this hand with a verlipping food to it, but I will punish home. No, I will weep no more in such a night to shut me out. Pour on, I will endure in such a night as this. O Regan of Goneril, your old kind father, whose frank heart gave all. Oh, that way of madness lies. Let me shun that. No more of that. Good my lord, enter here. Prithee go in thyself. Seek thine own ease. This temper will not give me leave to ponder on things that would hurt me more. But I'll go in. In, boy, you can go first. You houseless poverty. Nay, get thee in. I'll pray, and then I'll sleep. Poor naked wretches, wheresoever you are, that by the pelting of this pitiless storm, how shall your houseless hands and unfit sides be your lopped and windowed ruggedness, raggedness defend you from seasons such as this? Oh, I have taken too little care of this. Take physic pump. Expose thyself to feel what wretches feel, that thou mayest shake the superfluous to them and show the heavens more just. Seven and a half, seven and a half, poor Tom. Oh. Come not in here, Uncle. There's a spirit. Help me, help me. Oh, give me thy hand. Who's there? Oh. Oh, 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 a spirit, a spirit. He says his name is poor Tom. What art thou that dost do grumble there in the straw? Come forth. <coughs> Oi, the foul fiend follows me. To through the sharp hawthorn blow the winds. Ah, go to thy bed, Dick, and warm thee. Didst thou give all to thy daughters? And art thou come to this? Who gives anything to poor Tom? <laughs> Whom the foul fiend that led through fire and through flame, through ford and whirlpool, over bog and quagmire, that have laid knives under his pillow and halters in his pew, who sat the rapt vein by his porridge and made him proud of heart? To ride on a bay trotting horse over a four inch bridge. <laughs> to course his own shadow. Oh, uh, traitor. Bless thy five wits. Come to call. Oh. Do 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 do. <laughs> Bless thee from whirlwinds. Stop blasting and taking. Do poor Tom some charity, whom the foul fiend vexes. There could I have him now. And there, and there, and there again, and there. As his daughters brought him to this pass, couldst thou save nothing? Wouldst thou give them all? Nay, he reserved a blanket, else we'd all be shamed. 
Now, all the plagues that in the pendulous air have faded over men's faults, light on the, thy daughters. He has no daughters, sir. Death, traitor. Nothing could have subdued nature to such a lowness and put his unkind daughters. Is, is it the fashion that discarded fathers should have thus little mercy on their flesh? Judicious punishment. Was this flesh begot those pelican daughters? Pelicock sat on Pelicock Hill. Hello, 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 hello. This cold night will turn us all to fools and madmen. Take heed of the foul fiend. Obey thy parents, keep thy word, justly swear not. Commit not with man's sworn spouse. Set not thy sweetheart on proud array. Sounds a call. What hast thou been? A serving man, proud in heart and mind that curled my hair, wore gloves in my cap. Served the lust of my mistress' heart, and did the act of darkness my power. Swore as many oaths as I spake words, and broke them in the sweet face of heaven. One that slept in the contriving of lust, and waked to do it. Wine must die deeply, die dearly, and in woman outparamored the Turk, also, also power. Of heart, light of ear, bloody of hand, hog in sloth, fox in stealth, wolf in greediness, dog in madness, lion in prey. Let not the creaking of shoes nor the rustling of silks betray thy poor heart to woman. Keep thy foot out of brothels, thy hand out of plackets, thy pen from lenders' books. And defy the foul fiend. Still, through the hawthorn blows the cold wind. Says someone, no, no, nanny. Dolphin, my boy, my boy, shut up. Let not him trot by. <laughs> now, what better in a grave than this to answer with thy unanswered, uncovered body, this extremity in the skies is man no more than this consider him well thou art owest the worm no silk the beast no hide the sheep no wool the cat no perfume the huh um, hair here's three honest more are sophisticated thou art the thing itself unaccompanied man is no more but such a poor bear, poor animal as thou art. Huh, off, off, you are landing. Come, unbutton here. Prithee, uncle, be contented. Tis a naughty night to swim in. Now a little fire with a wild field were like an old lecher's heart, a small spark. All the rest on his solid body's cold. Look, here comes a walking fire. Oh, yes. the foul fiend, flippity gibbet, he begins at curfew and walks till the first cock. He gives the web and the pin, squints the eye and makes the hair lip, mildews the white heat wheat and hurts the poor creature that with old footed thrice the world he met the nightmare and her ninefold bitter a light and her trough plight and a right thee which a right thee Kent? How fair is your grace? Uh, who's he? What, what's he? Who's there? What is I, I'm frozen again. Sorry. Master? Oh, Tom. Okay. That's the... Uh, that, uh, Keith, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Everybody throw... I, I, I okay. again. All right, I'll do it. I'll, I'll just go ahead. Okay. Poor Tom that eats the swimming frog, the toad, the tadpole, 
the wall knew then the water left in the fury of his heart when the foul fiend rages eats cow dung for salad swallows the old rats in the ditch dog drinks the green mantle of the standing pool who is whipped from tithing to tithing and stalked punished and imprisoned who hath had three suits to his back, six shirts to his body, horse to ride and weapon to wear. But mice and rats and such small deer have been Tom's fool for seven long years. <clears throat> Beware, my follower. Peace, Morgan. Peace, thou fiend. Oh. <laughs> well, with your grace, no better what? company. There you go. The Prince of Darkness is a gentleman. Bodo, and Mao. Our flesh and blood is grown so vile, my lord, that it doth hate what it gets. It gets it. What's up for Tom's cold? Go in with me, my duty cannot suffer to obey in all your daughter's hard commands. Though their injunctions be to bar my doors and let this tyrannous knight take a hold upon you, yet I have ventured to come to seek you out and to bring you where both fire and food is ready. Uh, uh, first, let me talk with that this philosopher. What is the cause of thunder? Good, my lord, take his offer. Go into the house. Now, I'll talk a word with him, the same uh, learned Stephen. What is your study? How to prevent the fiend and to kill Varman. Well, let me ask you one word in private. Importune him once more to go, my lord. His wits begin to unsettle. Canst thou blame him? His daughters seek death. Ah that good Kent. He said it would be thus, poor banished man. Thou saying that king grows mad, I'll tell thee, friend, I am almost mad myself. I had a son, now outlawed from my blood. He sought my life. But lately, very late, I loved him, friend. No father his son dearer, truth to tell thee, the grief hath grazed my wits. What a night is this! I do beseech your grace. Oh, cry you mercy, sir. Noble philosopher, your company. Tom's a cold. In fellow there, into the hovel. Keep thee warm. Tom lets all in. This way, my lord. With him. I will keep still with my philosopher. Good my lord, soothe him. Let him take the fellow. Take him, you on. Take him, you on. Sirach, come on. Go along with us. Uh, come, good Athenian. No words, no words. Hush. Child roll into the dark tower came. His word was king. I fall and on. I smell the blood of a British man. And we'll skip uh, scene five and go on to scene six, a chamber in a farmhouse adjoining the castle with Gloucester and Kent. Here is better than the open air. Take it thankfully. I will piece out the comfort with what addition I can. I will not be long from you. All oh, the power of his wits have given way to his impatience. The gods reward your kindness. Sotoretto calls me and tells me Nero is an angler in the lake of darkness. Pray, innocent, and beware the foul fiend. Pithy uncle, tell me whether a man may, madman may be a gentleman or a yeoman. A king, a king. No, oh, he's a yeoman that has a gentleman to his son. For he's a mad yeoman that sees his son a gentleman before him. To have a thousand with red herring spits 
red burning spits. Come, come, hissing, come, hissing in upon him. The foul scene bites my back. He's mad to dress in the la tameness of a wolf, a horse's health, a boy's love, or a whore's oath. Did you lose your place, Lear? It shall be done. Who? Lear? Lear? Yeah. Oh my God. This t I got, I can't use this text anymore. Uh, Royal Shakespeare Company just juggled. Uh, the little dogs and all, is that it? Uh, go. It no. shall be done. I will arraign them straight. Come, sit thou here, most learned justice, sir. Now, sapient, sir, sit here. Now, you, she foxes. Look where he stands and glares. Wantest thou eyes at trial, madam? Come o'er the born, Bessie, to me. Her bowl hath... Her, oh, that's you, okay. And she must not speak, and why she dares not come over to thee. The foul fiend haunts poor Tom in the voice of a night in pain. Up dance cries in Tom's belly for two white herring. Croak not, black angel, I have no food for thee. How do you, sir? Stand you not so amazed? Will you lie down and rest upon the cushions? Now, jurors of Peter. Ah, uh, I'm lost. Okay, say a line. What's, what's my, what's my, what's the line I'm supposed to say? I'll see their trial first. I'll see your child first. I'll see your child first. Okay, I'll just say that. I'll see your child first, but I'm going to switch books. <laughs> Bring in the evidence. I am really sorry. I'm sorry. This is crazy. Now, Shakespeare never says sorry. No. Thou, well, I'll just thou, do it. I'll just do it for six. now. That's, thou hast it true. Line 32. Line 32? At three, scene six. Three, scene six. Oh, yes. Line 32. Uh, let them antagonize Regan. I'll see the trial first. first. Oh, what breeds her heart. Um, I'm tempted to go get the other book. What's that? Why don't you have Mike read it till you find okay, your book? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. I'll see their trial first. Bring me in the evidence. Thou rope man of justice, take thy place. And now, this yoke fellow of equity, bench by his side. You are of the commission. Sit you too. Let us deal just say, sleepest or wakest thou, jolly shepherd? Thy sheep be in thy corn. And for the and for one blast of thy minikin mouth, thy sheep shall take no harm. <laughs> The cat is gray. Arena. Arena first to That's Goneril. It. I here take my oath before this honorable assembly. She kicked the poor king, her father. Come hither, mistress. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it. Cry you mercy. I took you for a joint stool. And here's another whose walk looks proclaim what store her heart is made of. Stop her there. Arms, arms, sword, fire, corruption in this place. False justicer, why hast thou let her escape? Bless thy five wits. Oh, pity, sir, where is the patience now that thou so often boasted to retain? My tears begin to take his part so much that'll mar my counterfeiting. Now the little, little dogs and all. Uh, Lear's not there. <laughs> we said that line before. The uh, little dogs and all. Peter? Hey, Peter. I've switched to my, switched to my correct okay. book. Well, 
catch up with you. So act three scene, we're in scene which? Six. Oh, no. Six? Coming towards the end of it, yes. Okay, right, next page. Six, okay, what line? Little dogs and all. Around 61. 61. Um, I, I'm really sorry about this, but anyway. Uh, oh, oh, little dogs and all, I found it. Yes. There it is. Uh, the little dogs and all, Trey, Blanche, and Sweetheart. See? They, they bark at me. <laughs> yeah. Tom will throw his head at them. You can't. Thy mouth or black or white, tooth that poisons if it bite, mastiff, greyhound, mongrel, grim, hound or spaniel, brach or limb, or bobtail, tyke or trundle tail, Tom will make them weep and wail. For with throwing thus my head, dogs leap the hatch and all are fled. <laughs> Come, march to wakes and fairs and market towns. Poor Tom, thy horn is dry. Then let them anatomize Regan. She what breeds in her about her heart. Is there any cause in nature that makes these hard hearts? You, sir. I entertain for one of my hundred, only I do not like the uh, fashion of your garments. You will say that they are Persian, but uh, let them be changed. Now, good my lord, lie here and rest a while. No, uh, make no make no noise, make no noise. Draw the curtains. So, so, we'll go to supper in the morning. And I'll go to bed at noon. Come hither, uh, friend. Where is the king, my master? Here, sir, but troubles him not. Trouble him not. His wits are gone. Good friend, I pray thee, take him in thy arms. I have overheard a plot of death upon him. There is a litter ready, lay him in it, and drive towards Dover, friend, where thou shalt meet both welcome and protection. Take up thy master, if thou shouldest dally half an hour, his life with thine, and all that offer to defend him, stand in the assured loss. Take up, take up, and follow me, that will to some provision, quick, Give thee quick conduct. Oppressed nature sleeps. This rest might yet have bombed thy broken sinews, which, if convenience will not allow, stand in hard cure. Come, help to bear thy master. Thou must not stay behind. Come, come away. And we are better seafaring than the woes. We scarcely think our miseries are foes. Who alone suffers, suffers most in the mind, leaving free things and happy shows behind. But then the mind much sufferance doth o'er skip, when grief hath mates and bearing fellowship. How light and portable my pain seems now, when that which makes me bend makes the king bow. <laughs> he chided as I fathered, Come away, mark the high noises and thyself be ray. When false opinion, whose wrong thought defiles thee, is thy just proof, repeal, repeals and reconciles thee. What will happen more tonight? Safe scape the king. Back. Back. seven in Gloucester's castle. <laughs> On the wall. Go oh, speedily to my lord, your husband. Show him this letter. The army of France has landed. Seek out the traitor Gloucester. Did we lose Leilani? Reagan? Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta, let me see. Hang him instantly. Please, please read that part again. Hang him instantly. No, read it again. Give me the cue, please. Okay. Go oh, speedily to my lord, your husband, show him this letter. The army of France has landed. Seek out the traitor Gloucester. Hang him instantly. On roll. Fuck out his eyes. Leave him to my displeasure. Edmund, keep you, your, keep you our sister company. 
The revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not fit for your beholding, advised the Duke, where you are going to a most festinate preparation. We are bound to the like. Our posts shall be swift and intelligent betwixt us. Farewell, dear sister. Farewell, my lord of Gloucester. How now? Where's the king? My lord of Gloucester is, has conveyed him hence, some five or six and thirty of his knights, hot questress after him, met him at gate, who, or with some other of his lord's dependents, are gone with him towards Dover, where they boast to have well-armed friends. Get horses for your mistress. Farewell, sweet lord and sister. Edmund, farewell. Go seek the traitor Gloucester. Pinion him like a thief. Bring him before us. Though we may well not pass upon his life without the form of justice, yet our power shall do a courtesy to our wrath, which men may blame but not control. Who's there? Traitor? Ingrateful fox, tis he. Bind fast its corky arms. What means your graces? My good friends, consider you are my guests. Do me no foul play, friends. Find him, I say. Hard, hard, O oh, filthy traitor. Unmerciful lady as you are, I'm none. To this chair, find him, villain thou shalt find. By the kind guard, gods, tis mostly ignoble done to pluck me by the beard. So what, and such a traitor? Naughty lady, these hairs which thou dost ravage from my chin will quicken and accuse thee. I am your host. With robber's hands my hospitable favors you should not ruffle thus. What will you do? Oh, sir, what letters have you laid from France? Be simple answered, for we know the truth. And what confederacy have you with the traitors, late-footed in the kingdom? To whose hands have you sent the left lunatic king? Speak! I have a letter, guessingly set down, which came from one that's of a neutral heart, and not from one opposed. Cunning. And false. Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore to Dover? Wast thou not charged at pe peril? Wherefore to Dover? Let him answer that. I am tied to the stake, and I must stand the course. Wherefore to Dover? Because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes, nor thy fierce sister in his anointed flesh stick boorish fangs. The sea with such a storm has his bare head in hell black night endured, would have buoyed up and quenched his stellar fires. Yet, poor old heart, he hopped to the heavens to reign. If wolves had at the gates howled that stern time, thou should have said, good porter, turn the key. All cruels else subscribe, but I shall she see the winged vengeance Overtake such children. See it shalt thou never. Fellows, hold the chair. Upon these eyes of thine I'll set my foot. He that think to live till he be old, give me some help, O oh, cruel, O oh, you gods. One side will mock another, the other too. If you see vengeance. Una. Hold your hand, my lord. I have served you ever since I was a child, but better service have I never done you than now to bid you hold. How now, you dog? If you didst wear a beard upon your chin, I'd shake it on this quarrel. What do you mean? My villain. Ah. Nay, then come on and take the chance of anger. Give me thy sword, a pheasant stand up thus. Oh, I'm slain. My lord, you have one eye left to see some mischief on him. Oh. Lest it see more, prevent it. Oh, jelly. Where is thy luster now? 
all dark and comfortless. Where's my son Edmund? Oh, Edmund, enkindle no. all the sparks of nature to quit this horrid act. Out, treacherous villain, thou callst on him that hates thee. It was he that made the overture of thy treasons to us, who is too good to pity thee. Oh, my follies! Then Edgar was abused. Kind gods, <laughs> forgive me that, and prosper him. Go, thrust him out at gates, and let him smell his way to Dover. How is it, my lord? How look you? I have received a hurt. Follow me, lady. Turn out that eyeless villain. Throw this slave upon the dunghill. Regan, I believe a pace. Untimely comes this hurt. King your arm. I'll never care what weakens me, weakness I do if this man come to good. If she live long and in the end meet the old course of death, Women will all turn monsters. Let's follow the old Earl and get the bedlam to lead him where he would. His roguish madness allow itself to anything. Go thou, I'll fetch some flax and whites of eggs to apply to his bleeding face. Now, heaven help him. Act four, back on the heath. Poor Tom, poor Tom. <laughs> the yet better thus known to be condemned and still condemned and flattered, to be worse, the lowest and most rejected thing of fortune, stands still in esperance, lives not in fear. A lamentable change is from the best, the worst returns to laughter. Welcome then, thou unsubstantial air that I embrace. A wretch that thou hast blown into the worst owes nothing to thy blast. Oh, who comes here? It's my line too. My yeah. father poorly led? World, world, oh world, but that thy strange mutations make us hate thee. Life would not yield to age. Oh, my good Lord, I have been your tenant and your father's tenant these four score years. Away, get thee away, good friend, be gone. Thy comforts can do me no good at all. Thee may, I may hurt. Alack, sir, you cannot see your way. I have no way, and therefore I want no eyes. I stumbled when I saw, full often to see, our means secure us, and our mere defects prove our commodities. Oh, dear son Edgar, the food of thy abused father's wrath, but I must live to see thee in my touch. I'd say I'd have eyes again. How now? Who's there? Oh, God, who is can say I am at the worst? I am worse than e'er I was. Tis poor mad Tom. And worse I may not be yet. The worst is not so long as we can say this is the worst. Fellow, where goest? It is a beggar man, is it? Madman and beggar. He has some reason, else he could not beg. In the last month's storm, I saw such a fellow, which made me think a man, a worm. My son came then into my mind, and yet my mind was then scarce friends with him. I have heard more since, as flies to wanton boys, we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. How should this be? Bad is the trade that must play fool to sorrow angering itself and others. Bless thee, master. Is that the naked fellow? Aye, my lord. Then prithee get thee gone, if for my sake thou wilt o'ertake us, hence a mile or twain, in the way of toward Dover. Do it for ancient love, and bring some covering for this naked soul. 
will all entreat to leave me. Alack, sir, he is mad. Is the time's plague when madmen lead the blind? Do a, as I bid thee, or rather do thy pleasure above the rest. Be gone. I'll bring him the best peril that I have, and come on what will. Sirrah, naked fellow. Come to cold, I cannot do it further. Come hither, fellow. And yet I must. And bless thy sweet eyes, they bleed. Knowest thou the way to Dover? Both style and gate, horseway and footpath. For Tom hath been scared out of his good wits. Bless thee, good man's son, from the foul fiend. Five fiends have been in poor Tom at once. Of just as Obedicut, uh, Hobbitabins, Prince of Dumbness, Mahu of Stealing, Modo of murder, flippity the gibbet of mopping and mowing, who <laughs> since possesses chambermaids and waiting women. <laughs> so bless thee, master. Here, take this purse. Thou whom the heaven's plagues have humbled to all strokes, that I am wretched, make thee, hap thee the happier. Heavens deal so still. Let the superfluous and the lust dieted man that slaves your obe ordinance that will not see because he doth not feel, feel your power quickly. So distribution should unto excess and each man have enough. Dost thou know Dover? Aye, master. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. But bring me but to the very brim of it, and I'll repair the misery thou dost bear with something rich about me. From that place I shall need no leading. Give need. me thy arm, or Tom shall lead thee. Sing too before Albany's palace, Goneril and Edmund. Buckham, my lord, I marvel our mild husband not met us on the way. Here comes Oswald. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Madam, within, but never man so changed. I told him of the army that was landed. He smiled at it. I told him, you were coming. His answer was, the worst of Gloucester's treachery and of the loyal service of his son. And I informed him, then he called me soft and told me I had turned the wrong side out. What, a, what most he should dislike seems pleasant to him, but like offensive. Oh, Goneril. Goneril. Oh, sorry. Then you shall go no further. It is this cowish terror of his spirit that dares not undertake. He'll not feel wrongs which ride him to, all, to an answer. Our wishes on the way. They prove effects back, Edmund, to my brother. Hasten his musters and conduct his powers. I must change names at home and give the distaff into my husband's hands. This trusty servant shall pass between us. Ere long you are like to heart, like to hear. If you dare venture in your own behalf, a mistress's command, where this spare speech. <laughs> Decline your head. This kiss, if it does dost, dost speak, which stretch thy spirits up into the air, conceive and fare thee well. Yours in the ranks of death. Gloucester, oh, the difference of man and man. 
to thee a woman's services are dear, are due, sorry. My fool usurps my body. Madam, here comes my lord. I have been worth the whistle. Oh, Goneril, you are not worth the dust where the rude wind blows in your face. I fear your disposition, that nature, nature which contemns its own origin cannot be bordered certain in itself. She that herself will sliver and disbranch all from her material sap and uh, perforce must weather then come to deadly use. No more. This, the text is foolish. Wisdom and goodness to the vile seem vile, and still savor but themselves. What have you done? Tigers, not daughters, what have you performed? A father, a gracious aged man, whose reverence even the head-lugged bear would lick? Most barbarous, most degenerate, have you matted? Oh, could my brother neighbor, brother suffer you to do it? A man? A prince by him so to be fitted, if that the heavens should visible spirits send quickly down to tame these vile offenses, it will come. The humanity must perforce its prey on itself like monsters of the deep. Milk delivered man, that here is the cheek for gloves, the head for wrongs. Who has not in thy brows an eye discerning thine, thine honor from thy suffering that know not, know not now? Fools do those villains pity who are punished ere they have done their mischief. Where is the, where is the drum? France spreads, spreads his banners in our noiseless land with plummeted helm. They state, my state begins each threat. Whilst thou a moral fool, sit still and cries, alack, why does he so? See thyself, Neville, and, and proper deformity seems not in the fiend so horrid as in woman. O oh, vain fool! Thou changed and self-covered thing for shame. Be monster to not thy feature, and work to my fitness to let these hands obey my blood. They are apt enough to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bones. However thou art a fiend, a woman's shape shall doth shield thee. Mary. Your man put you. Hey, what news? Oh, my good lord, the Duke of Cornwall's dead, slain by his servant, going to put out the other eye of Gloucester. Gloucester's eye? A servant that he bred, thrilled with remorse, opposed against the act, bending his sword to his great master, who threatened enraged flew on him and against them felt him dead but now not without the harmful stroke which since hath plucked him after this shows you are above you justicers that this our never nether crimes so speedily can binge but oh poor gloucester lost his other eye both, both, my lord. This letter, madam, craves a speedy answer. Tis from your sister. One way, one way I like this well, but being widow and my Gloucester with her, may all the building in my fancy pluck upon my hateful life. Another way, the news is not so tart, I'll read an answer. 
Where was this son that did take out his eyes? Come with my lady hither. He is not here. No, my good lord, I met him back again. Knows he the wickedness? Ay, my good lord, to you was he informed against him and acquired the house on purpose that their punishment might have the freer course. That's I, my good lord. Eh? Like your eye? I. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gloucester, I live to thank thee for the love thou showest the king and to revenge thine eyes. Come hither, friend. Tell me what more thou knowest. And at the scene three, we'll skip and skip scene four as well. So we're going all the way down to scene five. And Cordelia has a little short speech there, but we'll go right on to Gloucester's castle with Regan and Oswald. But are my brother's powers set forth? Aye, madam. Himself in person there? Madam, with much ado, your sister is the better soldier. Lord Edmund spoke, not with your lord at home. No, madam. What might impart my sister's letter to him? I know not, lady. Faith, he is posted hence on serious matter. It was great ignorance, Gloucester's eyes being out to let him live. Where he arrives, he moves, all hearts against us. Edmund, I think, is gone, in pity of his misery, to dispatch his knighted life. Moreover, to describe the strength of the enemy. I must needs after him, madam, with my letter. Our troops set forth tomorrow. Stay with us. The ways are dangerous. I may not, madam. My lady charged my duty in this business. Why should she write to Edmund? Might not you transport her purposes by word? Be like something I know not what. I love thee. Let me unseal the letter. Madam, I had rather... I know your lady does not love her husband. I'm sure of that. And at her late being here, she gave strange... What's oh, that yeah. word? Oh, yes, and most speaking looks to noble Edmund. I know you are of her bosom. I, madam? I speak in understanding. You are, I know it. Therefore, I do advise you, take this note. My lord is dead. Edmund and I have talked, and more convenient is he for my hand than for your ladies. You may gather more if you do find him. Pray you, give him this. And when your mistress hears thus much from you, I pray, desire her, call her wisdom to her, so fare you well. If you do chance to hear of that blind traitor, preferment falls on him that cuts him off. Would I could meet him, madam, I would show what party I do follow. Fare thee well. And in scene six, we're at Dover with Gloucester and Edgar dressed as a peasant. When shall we come to the top of that same hill? You do climb up it now. Look how we lay labor. Methinks the ground is even. Oh, horrible steep. Hark, you hear the ocean? No, truly. Why, then your other senses grow imperfect by your eyes' anguish. So may it be, indeed. Methinks thy voice is altered. And thou speakest in better phrase and matter than thou didst. You're much deceived, and in nothing am I changed but in my garments. Methinks you're better spoken. Come on, sir, here's the place. Stand still. How fearful and dizzy it is to cast one's eyes so low. The crows and choughs that wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles. Halfway down hangs one that gathers sampire. Dreadful trade. Methinks he seems no bigger than his head. The fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice, and yon 
small anchoring bark diminished to her cock, a cock of buoy almost too small for sight. <laughs> the murmuring surge of them that on the unnumbered idle pebbled chafes cannot be heard so high. I'll look no more, lest my brain turn and the deficient sight topple down headlong. Set me where you stand. Give me your hand. You are now within a foot of the extreme verge. For all beneath the moon, I would not leap upright. Let go my hand. Here, friend, is another purse. In it, a jewel, well worth a poor man's taking. Fairies and gods prosper it with thee. Go thou farther off, bid me farewell, and let me hear thee going. Now, fare you well, good sir. With all my heart. Why I do trifle thus with his despair is done to cure it. Oh, you mighty gods, this world I do renounce, and in your sights, Shake patiently my great affliction off, if I could bear it longer, and fall, not fall, to quarrel with your great opposeless wills, my snuff and loath pot of nature should burn itself out. If Edgar live, oh, bless him. Now, fellow, fare thee well. Uh, uh. Gone. Sir, farewell. And yet I know not how conceit may rob the treasury of life when life itself yields to the theft. Had he been where he thought, by this have thought been passed, alive or dead. Oh, sir, friend, hear you, sir? Speak. Thus might he pass indeed. Ah, yet he revives. What are you, sir? Away, and let me die. Hadst thou been aught but gossamer, feather, air, so many fathom down precipitating, thou didst shiver like an egg, but thou dost breathe, past heavy substance, believest not, speakest, art sound. Ten masts that each make not the altitude which thou hast perpendicularly fell. Thy life's a miracle. Speak yet again. But uh, have I fallen or no? From the dread summit of this chalky bourne, look up a height. The shrill gorged lark so far cannot be seen or heard. Do but look up. Alack! I have no eyes. Does wretchedness deprive that benefit to end itself by death? T'was yet some comfort when misery could beguile the tyrant's rage and frustrate his proud will. Give me your arm. Up, up, so. How is it? Feel you your legs? You stand? Too well. Too well. This is above all strangeness. Upon the crown of the cliff, what thing was that which parted from you? A poor, unfortunate beggar. As I stood here below, methought his eyes were two full moons. He had a thousand noses, horns whelped and waved like the enraged sea. It was some fiend. Therefore, thou happy father, think that the clearest gods who make them honors of men's impossibilities have preserved thee. I do remember now. Henceforth, mm. I'll bear affliction till it do cry out itself. Enough, enough, and die. That thing you speak of, I took it for a man. Often would would say... The fiend, the fiend, he led me to that place. Bear free and patient thoughts, but who comes here? 
The safer sense will ne'er accommodate his mask of us. No, they cannot touch me for feigning. I am the king himself. Oh, thou side-piercing sight! Nature's above art in that respect. There's your press money. That fellow handles his bow like a crow copper. Draw me a clothier's yard. Oh, look, look, a mouse! Peace, peace. This piece of toasted cheese will do it. Oh, there's my gauntlet. I'll prove it on a giant. Bring up the brown bills. Or oh, the brown hills. Oh, a well-flown bird. In the clout, in the cloud. Give the word. Sweet marjoram. Pass. I know that voice. Ha! Ah. Goneril with a white beard. They flattered me like a dog and told me I had white hairs in my beard and the black ones were there. To say I and no to everything I said I and no to was no good divinity. When the rain came to wet me once and the thunder would not peace up my building, I, I, there I found them. There I smiled them out. Go to. They are not men of their words. They told me I was everything. Tis a lie. I am not a you proof. The trick of that voice, I do remember well, is not the king. I, every inch a king, when I do stare, see how the subject quakes? I pardon that man's life. What was thy cause? Adultery? Ha! Thou shalt not die. Die for adultery? No! The wren goes to it, and the small gimlet fly does lecher in my sight. Let copulation thrive! For Gloucester's bastard son was kinder to his father than my daughter's got between the lawful sheets. To it, luxury, pell-mell, for I lack soldiers. Behold yon simpering dame whose face between her folks presages snow. That misses virtue, and does shake the head to hear a pleasure's name. The fish you know the horn of the horse goes through with more riotous appetite. No, but down, down from the waist they are centaurs, though women all above. But to the girdle do the gods inherit, beneath is all the fiends. There's hell, there's darkness, there is a sulfurous pit, burning, scalding, stench, consumption. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs> Give me an ounce of suet, good apothecary, to sweeten my imagination. There's, there's money for thee. Oh, let me kiss that hand. Uh, no, let me wipe it first. It smells of mortality. Oh, ruined piece of nature. This great world shall so wear out to naught. Dost thou know me? Ah, I remember thine eyes well enough. Dost thou squinny at me? No, no, do thy worst, blind Cupid. I'll, I'll not love. Read thou this challenge. Mark but the penny of it. Well, all the letters, sons, I could not see one. Ah. I would not take this from report. It is, and my heart breaks of it. Read. What? With the case of eyes? <laughs> oh, are you there with me? No eyes in your head and no money in your purse. Your eyes are in a heavy case. Your purse is in a light. The purse in a light. Yet you see how this world goes. I see it feelingly. What? Aren't mad? A man may see how this world goes with no eyes. Look with thine ears. See how yon justice rails upon yon simple thief. Hark in thine ear. Change places and handy dandy which is the justice, which is the thief. Thou hast seen a farmer's dog bark at a beggar? Aye, sir. And the creature run from the cur? Thou, thou dost... Thou dost behold the great image of authority, a dog's obeyed in office. Thou hast beetle, uh, thou uh, hold thy bleedy hand, bloody hand. Why dost thou lash that whore? Strip thy own hat back. Thou hotly list to use her in that kind for which thou whipst her. The usurer hangs the cozener. Though tattered clothes small, uh, vices do appear. Riches, robes, and furred gowns hide all. Plate sin with gold, and a strong lance of just turtles breaks. Arm it in ranks, a pygmy straw does pierce it. None does offend now. 
I say none, I'll label them. Take that of me, my friend, who have the power to seal the accuser's lips. Now get the glass eyes, and like a scurvy politician, seem to see the things thou dost not. Now, 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 pull off my boots. Harder, harder. So. Oh, matter and impertinency mixed. Reason in madness. <laughs> if thou wilt weep in, if thou wilt weep in, in fortunes, take mine eyes. I know thee well enough. Thy name is Gloucester. Thou must be patient. We came crying hither. Thou knowest the first time that we smell the air, we wall and cry. I will preach to thee, Mark. Alack, alack the day. When we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. This a good block. We were a delicate strat uh, stratagem to show to, to shoe a tempered horse here with felt. I'll uh, put it in brief, in proof. And when I have stolen, and when I have, and when I have stolen upon these uh, sons-in-laws, son-in-laws, then kill, 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 kill. Oh, here he is. Lay hand upon him, sir. Your most dear daughter. No rescue? What? A prisoner? I am even the natural fool of fortune. Use me well, you shall have ransom. And let me have surgeons, and, and I am cut to the brains. You shall have anything. But no seconds? All of myself? Why, <laughs> this would make a man of man's so, uh, man of man's salt to use his eyes for garden water, water ports, water pots, aye, and laying uh, autumn's dust. Good, sir. I will die bravely, like a strong bridegroom. What? I will be jovial. Come, come, I am a king. Masters, know you that? You are a royal one, and we obey you. And there's life in it. Come, and you get it, and you shall get, get it by running. Sa, 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 sa! A slight most... Pitiful in the meanest wretch, past speaking in a king. Thou hast one daughter who redeems nature from the general court curse which twain have brought her to. Hail, gentle sir. Sir, speed you. What's your will? Do you hear aught, sir, of a battle toward? Most sure and vulgar. Everyone hears that which can distinguish sound. But by your favor, how near is the other army? Near and on speedy foot, the main discry de stands on the hourly thought. I thank you, sir. That's all. Though the queen on special ca uh, cause is here, her army is moved on. I thank you, sir. You ever gentle gods take my breath from me. Let not your worser spirit tempt me again to die before you, please. Well, pray you, father. Now, good sir, what are you? A most poor man made tame to fortune's blows who by the art of known and feeling sorrows and pregnant to good pity. Give me your hand, I'll lead you to some biding. Hearty thanks, the bounty and benison of heaven to boot and boot. A proclaimed prize, most happy, that eyeless head of thine was first framed flesh to raise my fortunes. Thou oh, old unhappy traitor, briefly thyself remember, the sword is out that must destroy thee. Now let thy friendly hand put strength enough to it. Wherefore, old peasant, darest thou support a published traitor? Hence, lest the infection of his fortune take like hold on thee, 
let go his arm. She'll not let go thee without further occasion. Let go, slave, thou diest. Good gentlemen, go your gate and let poor Volk pass. And should I have been swaggered out of my life, I would not have been so long as tis by a fortnight. Nay, come not near the old man. Keep out, chair. Try whether your costard or my bellow be the harder. She'll be playing with you. Out, dunghill. She'll pick your teeth, sir. Come no matter for your boys. Slave, thou hast slain me. Villain, take my purse. If ever thou wilt thrive, bury my body and give the letters which thou findst about me to Edmund, Earl of Gloucester. Take him out upon the English party. I'll have untimely death. I know thee well, a serviceable villain, as duteous to the vices of thy mistress as badness would desire. What, is he dead? Sit you down, father, rest you. I see these pockets, the letters that he speaks of. Maybe my friends. He's dead, I am only sorry he had no other death's man. Let's see. Leave gentle wax and manners, blame us not. To know our enemies' minds, we rip their hearts. Their papers is more lawful. Let our reciprocal vows be remembered. You have many opportunities to cut him off. If your will want not, time and place will, fruitfully, will be fruitfully offered. There is nothing done if you return the conqueror. Then am I the prisoner and his bed my jail. From the loath warmth whereof deliver me and supply the place for your labor, your wife, so I would say, affectionate servant, Goneril. Oh, one distinguished space of woman's will, a plot upon her virtuous husband's life, and exchange my brother. Here in the sands I'll rake up the most unsanctified of murderous lechers. And in the mature time, with this ungracious paper, strike the sight of the death practiced duke. For him, tis well that of thy death and business I can tell. The king is mad. How stiff is my vile sense that I stand up and have ingenuous feeling of my huge sorrows. Better I were to distract so I could my... So should my thoughts be severed from my griefs and woes by wrong imaginations lose the knowledge of themselves. Give me your hand. Far off, methinks, I hear the beaten drum. Come, Father, I'll bestow you with a friend.